themselves. So it's a very special uh, process in this way. And now students let us see why do organizational development, human resources, changing nature of the workplace, global markets, accelerated rate of change. Expert will further explain it. What we need to think of here is the title of the slide that is why do organizational development? Why should a manager think of organizational development? Why should he start doing organizational development? So it says that first of all human resource now science and technology is developing all the time with the result that not only the greater inventions or those which bring far reaching changes in the whole uh, atmosphere of business and industry but also there are changes in tools and implements there are changes at worker level too, there are changes in workstation designs, changes in ergonomics and we need to train people in new methods all the time we, when we introduce new technologies mm -hmm. and we need the highest level of training for our managers exactly. also in business management. So it's the human resource that in a way impels us to make continuous changes and develop the organizations continuously. Similarly, when we talk of changing nature of workplace, as I have explained, it may be a change in the work, workstation design or it may be change in the whole uh, office layout, mm -hmm. it may be a change in the installation of a factory yes. or introducing new machines which have to be installed, yes. change in assembly line. So that is uh, from bigger to even to smallest changes in the workplace and uh, the changes in global markets. Mm -hmm. This is an era of globalization and the world, world market is expanding it's expanding not only due to globalization and policies of World Bank or IMF, it's also expanding due to new products coming, new designs coming, mm -hmm. and uh, there are uh, uh, relaxations in the import and export procedures also. They have been streamlined, and so the market has uh, broadened. Yes. And now, global markets are available to managers and last of all when we call accelerated change it is common knowledge now that science is expanding at a great rate it's uh, more than doubling uh, in a year mm -hmm. and uh, its applications are bringing new technologies mm -hmm. and uh, new ways of working things and new ways of producing things. Yes. So that has uh, already taken us at the business and industry and uh, we have to continuously uh, race. Mm -hmm. uh, the managers have to be very quick in discerning all these changes and uh, they have to keep pace with the accelerated uh, rate of changes in science and technology. They have to be all updated always. They have to update themselves continuously. Mm -hmm. Who does organizational development, stakeholders, buy-in ownership involvement, change agents, change leaders, OD practitioners, internal consultants, external consultants, people who use advocates and assist others to implement OD, people who use and apply OD to their work. Now, this explains that somebody has to take initiative and has to start organizational development or start thinking about organizational development. And there are also certain forces which force us to develop the organizations. 
for example, the stakeholders, mm -hmm. because their investments are at stake, their profits are at stake, yes. and uh, their goodwill is at stake, are at stake mm -hmm. and also the uh, markets. So the stakeholders are in the form of buy-ins that another company buys a company or the ownership changes or there are other involvements in uh, the financial matters through loans and credits. And uh, these become change agents because they have their own ideas of changes and uh, mostly they come for development mm -hmm. and they insist on development. All right. Similarly, there are change leaders, people who are more innovative, more active in their thinking, more sensitive to changes in the markets or in changes in technologies. More revolutionized. More sort, you are right, they are revolutionary thinkers and they become change leaders. Mm -hmm. And leaders, as you know, are the people who wield influence over others and who can make other people do things, things. according to their thinking. Yes. And as you know, every discipline becomes a science. So organizational development has also become a science and it has its own practitioners. It has its uh, experts who are not only thinkers, but they can do things practically. All right. And uh, they can suggest strategies, they can analyze markets, they can visualize the benefits or otherwise of uh, new ways of uh, production. And uh, these people, when they develop into a business itself, they become consultants. Mm -hmm. And they have developed their own companies and they are now external consultants. That is, they provide consultancies to, to other companies, other companies well. and right. people for organizational development. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the people who use advocate and assist others to implement organizational development. People who use and apply organizational development to their own work, that is sort of internal consistency, and people who provide these services in a specialized manner to other companies, they are external consultants. We can infer that uh, not only it is a whole business, but it is a science in itself, organization development. Yes, it is a, a result of the science of organizational development. Organization, the, this science has given rise to certain business. Yes. And uh, they have developed into consultant companies now. Expert, uh, I would want to ask that when an organization is ready to undergo organizational development? This is very interesting. As you can see, there's no formula for uh, uh, measuring or for deciding that this is the time to change. But however, there are certain factors indicative of the right time to change. And it's uh, uh, in a very interesting way depicted here, it's dissatisfaction multiplied by vision and uh, first steps or the initiative and if the product of these three is greater than resistance to change, which means that it will overcome change and they can change now. Right. The resistance is not that forceful while the dissatisfaction and the vision and the initiative of the manager is more than resistance. So that is the time to change. And now students, few characteristics of organizational development. Change, collaborative effort, performance, humanistic, systematic, and scientific. I would like the expert to explain further. Now, these are the characteristics, which means that what is a good change and what is a change for the betterment of the company and the people? How does it show? So if the change is there, the change itself will indicate that things are changing. But 
to be a good change it must be a collaborative effort that is people should join hands and they should feel mm -hmm. that they are a part of it all right rather they wanted it they initiated it mm -hmm. and then it shows in the performance if it's a good change and people want it or they feel that they want it there will be an improvement in their performance and it must be humanistic that is we should not make people mechanical all right we should not make managers insensitive to the needs of their workers we all need to be humanistic all the time and we should uh, make it a belief hmm. that the business and industry are all working for the collective good of the people the collective good of the humanity but to be a successful change it must be an organized change which means it must be a systematic change that is there should be steps and they should be well planned they should be measured and they should be uh, taken in a succession so that they lead to success but all this must be based on scientific thinking on rational analysis all right and on the basis which can be discussed which can be challenged which can be improved on the rationality of the people or the managers who can think and analyze the things whereas students ordi interventions are techniques approaches range of actions designed to improve the health or functioning of the system organization specific means actions programs by which change can be determined the interventions are practical things so they cannot be generic they change from industry to industry from business to business and according to the environment or the situation available now when we talk of interventions if we want to be practical we must go to the detail of what sort of practical interventions are used and as i told you they are they differ from industry to industry and from business to business whether it's a manufacturing business or it's uh, marketing or it's uh, it provides uh, services so when we come to the practical it's the result of these interventions that shows whether we are successful in making the changes and let's see what sort of results are there that can guide us to the interventions as interventions lead to results from results we can infer interventions but sir there must be some indication for the application of these practically needed uh, applications yes i am talking of the same results that are the results of interventions od interventions let us see what are these human process t groups process consultation team building intergroup relations techno structure structural change quality circles total quality management also known as tqm and work design human resource management goal setting performance management reward systems career planning and development managing workforce diversity employee wellness strategic integrated strategic management cultural change strategic change and self designing organizations as you can see not only these are the interventions although here too they are given in a generic form but if you see against them there are three columns individual group and organization that that is there are 
certain interventions which will be on individual level and